The story of the American frontier is a tale of conquest, but also one of survival, persistence, and the grit of the people. It's 20 years after a bloody civil war. Despite Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, slavery is alive and well in the Wild West in the form of prostitution, the world's oldest profession. In Kansas and most of the Western territories, women are bought, sold, and traded like property. time, all right? Now, the idea is when the time's being done, you want to flex your muscles. And blow your chest up like a rooster. Well, what's a rooster do? That's right. Now, you see, when the time's done, you relax your muscles, blow all the air out of your chest, <laughs> and now look, the rope gives you just enough room that you can get yourself free. Yeah. Show me how, Paul. Show me how. Maybe after supper. And your studies. The capital of Kansas is Topeka, and the president of the United States is Chester Alvin Arthur. Chester Allen Arthur. Chester Allen Arthur. Can we ask him now, Ma, before the day's activity saw his disposition? Why do you care about some stupid old dance anyway? Oh, you hush up. Do my eyes deceive me? Is that a... Apple pie. I pick, peeled, and slice all the apples, and then spice them with cinnamon. Clay Lily was invited to a tie dance over at the Tigman Ranch. You know, apple pie is my favorite. Spice of cinnamon. Mm-hmm. The, the dance uh, is the girls wear a calico dress, and they bring a matching tie for the boys to choose. Now, I am familiar with the procedure of a tie dance, young lady. In fact, there was a time. It wasn't so long ago, as a matter of fact. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Skip to my loo, my darling. Flies in the buttermilk? <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> well, Pa, can I go? I'm sorry, darling. Maybe next year. But, Pa! You know what this pie needs? My teeth. Some honey. I'll bet some. you let me work at the mercantile. Nellie Wilcott is 16, and she's been proposed to. Darling, Nellie Wilcott is not my beautiful little girl. It's just a tad dance, Pa. Besides, if I ever do find a beau, once he meets you, he'll be too scared to ever call on me again. Darling, I'm sorry. Now, this matter is settled. I want to have my dinner in peace. How long does it take that boy to fetch some honey? I'll get him. They're gonna come calling, Clay. And we both know that extra year is for you, not her. Amelia, 
You're the one what told me what your dancing days led to. I was dancing at the Broken Spoke Saloon, not the Tigman's front parlor. And I didn't have two loving parents. That's my little girl. If I ain't gonna protect her, who's gonna? You can take comfort, Mr. Travis, in knowing that Jake is in a much better place. I'll do respect, Reverend. I'd rather have my boy standing right here beside me. I am sorry for your loss. sound of his voice. I'd give anything to hear his voice one more time. You 
who's my little boy. He's an angel. Blame me. Just say it. I'm the one who asked for the honey. Blame me. Amelia. Blame me! Come on! Blame me! Blame me! Blame me! Blame me! Blame me! I need you to! Please blame me! Please! <laughs> I nearly had a firewood. Job, so. <laughs> I love you. It's gonna be okay. Where are you off to? Go on the lake. I, uh, need you to stay here and help me with the cannon. But, Ma, you never asked me to help you before. I thought you said cannon's the one job you like to do all by yourself. This time I want you helping me. I'd done all my chores, all my book work. I was really looking forward to going to the lake. There's no telling who's out there. Last time I was out there, it was just Old Man Hill. That was nearly a year ago, and... Just had to help him bait his hook. I also want your daddy checking that boat for leaks. But, Ma, the, the boat is fine. You're staying here and helping me can these tomatoes. Why are you being silly? <gasps> Don't you dare call me names. Amelia? Isn't that just like you? Taking her side. Lily, darling, I want you to stay here and help your mama with the cannon. Just for today, just one time. Sweetie, I'm gonna go down and check that boat for leaks, okay? Be a good girl. Don't be doing me any favors, Clay.
Charlie, get up. You've slept long enough. Lily. Lily. Lily, your mama is calling you. Probably just in the privy or the barn. Not possible. I was awake before dawn. is missing. I'm going over to Jane Thompson's. Can't find Lily nowhere. Took her horse and left in the middle of the night. Jane Thompson. You tell Mrs. Travis what her daughter confided in you. Or that matching blue bonnet goes right back to Abilene. to Newton to catch a stage to Wichita. She read an advertisement about becoming a Harvey girl, waitress like Jane's sister. Thank you. I'd like a ticket to Wichita, please. Just one? Yes, sir. That'll be 50 cents. Visiting family, are you? Oh, no, my family lives around these parts. Employment? Why, yes, I'm hoping to get a position as a hobby girl. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about that outstanding company. Coach leaves in 10 minutes. Thank you. Good luck with your job hunting. How do you do, ma'am? I'm well. Name's Rick Marlowe. Lily Travis. Well, Lily like a flower. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Has anyone told you that you look like sunshine in the morning? You think you're gonna need that?
Lily's horse, all cooled down. <laughs> Limber and well fed. You won't find a finer animal in town. Where's the owner? <laughs> You're looking at him. That's my daughter's horse. Where's she? I don't know. Fella gave me a dollar to ride that horse back. Where did she go? I don't know. But I'm keeping that dollar. This girl been in here? What's she to you? She's our daughter. Boy, spit an image of you. We're looking for the girl. She has reddish brown hair. Down to here. Reddish brown, you say? Have you seen her? She don't look nothing like you. Have you seen the girl? Did she buy a ticket? No. Pretty little girl like that, that hair, I'd remember her. You son of a bitch. Clay. Clay, let's go. Come on now. Maybe she changed her mind. She's still in town. Fell in there is lying to you. I think it's time you told me everything you know. She left a couple hours ago on the stage to Wichita. Honest to God, they strike me dead. I'm going to get her. You head back to the ranch. I'm not losing another child, Clay. Go to Mercantile. Get us some supplies. I'm going to go in and deal with this fella. Be back here in five minutes. Clay, Lily told Jane she ran off because of our... because of my ill temper and distress. Five minutes. Take your glasses off. Pardon me? Take your glasses off. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Ma'am, that fella you're with, he uh, gave me a note to give you. He said you'd give me two bits. Thank you, ma'am. My darling Amelia. Do not follow me. I'll find our daughter, and I'll bring her home safely. Love you always. Your husband done this to me. Crazy son of a bitch. He done this to me. Broke my damn nose.
Excuse me, ma'am. Do you happen to know where they're hiring the Harvey girls? Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoa. Waiting in this line for more than an hour, sir. I'd like to fill out my application. Of course, miss. Fill this out. Thank you. Excuse me, ladies. You certainly met all our quotas. All the way to Colorado. Excuse me. I'm looking for my daughter. Her name's Lily Travis. Have you seen her? We'll have the remaining ladies fill out applications and we'll inform them they'll get a telegraph when employment is available. Sir, I need a second of your time. See, that's my daughter. Have you seen her? Now take a look at the picture. Sivers, Sivers. No, oh, sir, please, please, please. Ma'am, I have come all the way from Newton, and I'm looking for my daughter. She's got reddish brown hair. I'm sorry, your daughter hasn't been here. We haven't seen her. Thank you. Next. Hi, yes, I'd like to fill out an application for the Harvey girls. What's your name, boy? Jacob, Jacob Oliver. Jacob Oliver. Stage came in from Newton this morning. I'm looking for a girl that was on it. The driver here? No, sir. Well, who switched the team? That would be my pa. Is he here? Asleep in the back. Well, come on, show me. Come on now. Show me where your dad is. Walk any slower, you're going backwards. Mr. Allen, listen to me now. This is her. You see that? And that's what she looks like right there. Yeah, I saw a young girl with reddish brown hair. That's the girl. Where did she go? Did you see where she went? I did see this young young fellow. Rick Marlowe. Rick Marlowe. Where would I find him? The Rusty Spur. Yeah, come on in. Hello, Benedict. You're going to be pleased with these, sir. You made 10% more this month than you did last month. I see that. Yeah. Must have been from those uh, cowboys came through on that cattle drive, you figure? And they came through in the bundles. They were generous. Yeah, they were generous. <laughs> well. Did you have Doc check the girls out after they left? I hope they weren't too generous. Oh, we checked them out, sir, and they're, they're in good shape. Clean? Well, uh, now, you, you know that we keep those girls extra clean. Yeah, I bet you do check them out. <laughs> Speaking of the girls, how, how about those new girls? You having any trouble with them? Uh, we don't have any trouble except, uh, one of them got shit beat out of her. He was drunk. Just dumped her. And uh, he was drunk on a monkey. Well, we can't have that, can we, Benedict? Hell no. Well, go get the bastard and bring him in here. I'll get that son of a bitch. Well, get your ass up. I'm go going, I'm going. Hey, you. You son of a bitch, get over there. Have a seat, friend. What do you think I'll do with him, Benedict? I think he ought to cut his balls off. 
Give us a minute, Benedict. Thank you. My son, we don't abide ill manners in this establishment. It won't happen again, sir. Mm -hmm. Something else we don't abide by. <laughs> Trash like you fucking with the merchandise. Son of a bitch one hurt my swing. Somebody come in here and clean this shit up. Someone, mister? Yeah. I got something that belongs to Rig Marlowe. Hadn't seen him all day. Any idea where I might find him? Anywhere he can put his hands on a pretty girl or a deck of cards. If I see him, who should I say he's calling? Chester Ellen Arthur. You a friend of yours, Mr. President? Never met the man. Just delivering his property, you say? Yes, sir. Spinner Wheel Saloon, across the way. You ain't looking for trouble now, son, are you? You remind me of a young enough to pass through here. Firing his eyes like yours. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told him. There's a battle in every man. Two wolves that exist inside each of us. One's evil and anger, the other's love and hope. You know which one wins? The one you feed. Which one are you gonna feed, horse? can I do you for? I'm looking for Rig Marlowe. He's a gent, red vest, poker table, and Charlie's eyes. You got chips at the bar here? I do. <clears throat> Thank you. Much obliged. You gentlemen looking for a fourth? You can stop this man from stealing our money. <laughs> Just a run of luck. Have a seat. Name's Rig Marlowe. This here's Charlie. Silas, I haven't had the privilege of their surnames yet. Arthur Allen. Well, Arthur with two first names. Two dollar Annie. You boys from around here? Ain't nobody from around here. What you have in mind? Well, I'm looking for a little female companionship. I'm partial to the young ones. All the girls in here. A little long in the tooth. Well, you haven't even seen them all yet. You just got here. Five dollars. How many? I'll take one. Two. Yeah, ten more. 
Let's have a look, Silas. Two pair. <laughs> Guess you are lucky, mister. I mean, at least for me, anyway. The rusty spur has the youngest whores in town. And they don't put a hole in your pocket. Ain't that the truth. What about you, Mr. Marlowe? You know anywhere to find the young ones? Seems like you're looking for a particular girl, Arthur. Five dollars. They're all particular. How many? Two. OK, same here. Ten. Ten it is. Well, well, we find ourselves in the same predicament. Huh, Marlowe? You never did answer me, Mr. Marlowe, about the young ones. What you got? Who else? Queens over tents. Silas, what? Oh, uh... Silas, what the hell you doing, boy? Funny thing is, I got queens too. Let's not be hasty, friend. You know, it's the second time today that I counted five queens. You sure about that? Hell yeah. How do we know where the fifth lady came from? You were the dealer. That's exactly how I know. All right, now just put that gun away, sit down, and we'll work this out peaceful-like. Are you in on this with him? You son of a bitch. You arrived this morning from Newton with my daughter, Lily. Lily Travis. Now, where is she? Where? <laughs> Shit. Find what you're looking for, Hoss? Yeah. And now I'm looking for your boss. That'll be Ty Stover. And where do I find him? Top of the stairs, first door on the right. You tossed over? Yeah, I'm tossed over. I'm looking for my daughter. She's 17, got reddish brown hair, named Lily Travis. She was walking in your saloon this morning with Rig Marlowe. Haven't seen her. But I'm in and out all day. I'm Wichita's fire chief. Maybe you ought to ask Marlo. I did. Well, if Marlo doesn't know, then whoever gave you that information must be mistaken. It's not that he didn't know. He couldn't tell me. He's dead. Mr. Travis? Clay Travis. Mr. Travis. I may run a brothel, but I run it in accordance with the law. Maybe you're right about my information being wrong. I 
apologize for taking your time, sir. It's quite all right. Close the door. You seen this girl? She's got reddish brown hair, 17 years old. No, I haven't seen her sugar. Flies in the buttermilk, shoe, fly, shoe. Skip to my loo, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. Why are you singing that song? I heard one of the girls singing it today. I can't seem to get it out of my head. Was it this girl? Look at the picture. Was it her? Look at the picture, darling. She's my daughter. Have you seen her? Yeah. Yeah, that's her. Where? Where did you see her? I don't know. It's my daughter. <laughs> Hands off the girl. We don't want no trouble here, son. seconds to tell me what I want to know before I pump you full of lead. Where is she? Where? Get the hell out of here. We don't want that kind of trouble. Guess we know which wolf won. What'd you expect? It's his daughter. What would you do if someone disappeared, one of your kin? I reckon I'd feed the same hungry beast.
Travis, you have to believe me. Where? When I tell you that I have no idea where your daughter is. I don't know what Marlo did with her. Where is she? <coughs> Fuck you! I should have killed you in my goddamn bar. You son of a bitch! <coughs> where is she? Cut me loose and I'll tell you. Cut me loose. Tell me first. I traded her. You traded my daughter? Yeah, that's right, I traded her. Traded her for what? I traded her for that fucking bell. You traded my daughter for a goddamn bell. Yeah, I did. To who? LaVoy! <coughs> Where the hell is he? He's on a train. Train to where? Dodge City. <laughs> now, <coughs> now, set me free, or you'll die in this town. You're a dead man. You'll die right here. You won't ever get out. Oh, I set you free. Set me free, goddammit! Yeah, I'll set you free. <laughs> Train to dodge? Train just left. Clay Travis. Damn, I knew it was you. You killed five men in Abilene. Nearly 15 years ago. Yeah. You killed my best friend, Willie Parker. Just turned 17. He drew first. That ain't what he told me before he died. Some men choose to cast themselves in a bridal light before they meet their maker. And Kansas soil is full of fools who thought they were quicker. Catch that train. Sorry, man. Wow. Ticket. I didn't have a chance to buy a ticket. Five dollars. Five?
How long does it take to get to Dodge? Days in. Nothing goes wrong. What do you got in that coach back there? Empty. Like your goddamn head. Maybe I'll take a seat back there. Maybe you'll sit your ass right where you're at. Train's moving. It's dangerous. Five minutes to Dodge City. Five minutes. Two cents a piece. Three for a nickel. Apple, two cents a piece. Oh. Apples, fresh apples, two cents a piece. Three for a nickel. Care for an apple, sir? Two cents a piece. Care for an apple, sir? Fresh apples, two cents a piece. Mister, are you alive? Name's Girl. Girl. They call me Girl because I'm too ugly to have a name. <laughs> Where am I? Shack, Dodge City. This your sweetheart? Give me that. It's my daughter. Right, pretty. You live here by yourself? Me and my pa. He's not my real pa, but he was married to my ma before she was took by the angels. Where is he? Working. He'll be home tonight. He always comes home every night. I gotta use your privy. Out back. Pa's got the key. This here's silk. It's 
Still smells like my mama's lavender scent. She said she got it from France. I don't know where that is, but I know it ain't anywhere's near here. <laughs> Europe. France is in Europe. You know what I made out of this here silk? A dress. Why would I waste it on that? I made this fine table covering for fancy company. Well, with what you got left, you should make yourself a dress. I bet you'd look real pretty in it. <laughs> you got a wife, Mr. Clay? Yes, I do. Your ranch very large? It's big enough. After you find your daughter, maybe I could go back to your ranch with you. I'm a real hard worker, and, and I can cook, and I hardly eat anything. What about your pa? Ain't he gonna miss you? Ain't you gonna miss him? Well... Yeah. Skin him. Cook him up for stew. Yes, Pa. This, uh, food here ain't for free, stranger. I appreciate your daughter tending to me. And I give you my word I'll repay you. Hmm. Well, we can't eat promises now, can we? <laughs> I'm presently looking for my own daughter. I believe she's been imprisoned in town as a whore. Uh, tomorrow you give me a full day's work and then I'll decide if it's enough. Time is crucial to me, sir. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Hey! You can't leave me shackled here! Girl! Give him a pot to relieve himself with. <laughs> and you get your ass in the back room. Now! We start work at sunup round here. I hope you like bacon, eggs, and hot biscuits, Mr. Clay. Now what's this? I, I made a fine table covering out of my mama's silk from Paris. Paris? This came from your mama's shack in Abilene. A horny merchant came by and he exchanged this red silk for some afternoon pussy. You see, her mother was a silver dollar whore. And she deserved every purple trophy that she got. You're a rotten liar. Say that again, girl? Nothing. Hey, um, uh, I hope we didn't uh, row your slumber last night. I mean, we, uh, <laughs> girl and me, we, well, we rattled them floorboards, didn't we, girl? You know, she, uh, she got a face that'll kind of break a looking glass. But thank the Lord. She got her mama's pussy. This is a feast fit for the mayor himself. <laughs> I 
I may have to have you work two days for me, boy. Damn. You know how I like my biscuits. Smother with honey. And you go and bring me that out. Jackal me. Ten dollars I squirreled away from Pa. Take it, Mr. Clay. You'll be needing it to find your daughter. Thank you. Someone's looking for you in the lady gay. Who's looking for me? Room nine. You sure you got the right fella? Hey, sugar. Do you want a poke? I'm looking for room number nine. Long time. No craft. Damn you, Clay Travis. I was hoping you'd be all scarred and wrinkled like a dried up prune. Been a long time. You work here? Not much interest in a 40 year old whore. I own the place. Ah, uh, now you look great. The hell I do. I wasn't quite sure how you'd react if we ever saw each other again. Likewise. Is there something I could have done different, Clay? Anything different to get you to stay? No. Because I believe I did just about everything a girl could possibly do. And then some. In the end, I guess I just ended up falling in love with a different... Or? Different woman. How is our dear Amelia? She's out of sorts. For old time's sake, can I trust you now? For old time's sake. This is our daughter. Pretty thing. How old? She's 17. She arrived this morning by train in a cattle car with a few other young girls under the gun of a man named Lavoy. Lavoy recruits new girls. The demand exceeds the supply in Dodge. Where do I find Lavoy? Even you are no match for Lavoy. Samuel Colt's been known to make all men equal. If he's got your daughter, she'll never be the same little girl you remember. My advice to you, go home. Be with your Amelia and that little boy. I can't do that. Then stay here with me. Let me show you what you've been missing. Where's Lavoie now? He took possession of a horror house across the way. He calls it the French Chateau. 
Good seeing you again, Nell. Likewise. While you boys are gallivanting around town, I need you to gather me up some strays. You mean girls? Cats. Roland's living here outnumber the horrors. I found me a rat almost the size of a, a beaver this morning, Daddy. <laughs> Wasn't Uncle Barkley supposed to be on the train this morning? We had some important business to attend to, son. Now, my brother has had his shortcomings in the past. It's true. But when I left that man at that depot in Wichita, he was clear-eyed and sober. Praise the Lord. Mama always said Uncle Barkley was going to find the Lord's hand. I ain't never been accused of being a church-going man I have a kept. No, sir. But in this case, I'm going to have to line myself with your mama. Because nothing, and you all listen up, nothing, and I mean nothing in the whole world, is more important than family. A family in harmony will prosper in everything. Mm -hmm. That's an old Chinese proverb. And that's one we should all live by. Yes, Daddy. B bless the Chinese. Come in. Now, before you start talking, I need one of you to talk for both of you. Understand? All us girls got some demands. We want to be treated proper. Enough sleep so we don't got darkness under our eyes. A few minutes to ourselves between turns. A day off. Proper doctoring. Not just a quick sideways glance at our snatch. Anything else? That's the gist of it. Us. Hmm? Now, when they ask her, you tell them that horse snatch went dry, and she left town to try her luck in uh, Colorado. You understand? And anything else, you'll end up just like her. Now, get. French Chateau. Women to the left, look to the right. Hey. Afternoon. Lee Crawford. Well, you can call me LaVoy. Hey, Kip. Get this fine gentleman here my best glass of whiskey. Yes, Dad. I'm a son. Well, good boy. So what brings you out, you know, around these parts here, friend? Girl. Girl. Oh, cowboy, you in the right place. Tess! This here, Tess. Mm, 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 mm. She's off a party and young, but I'm looking for something a little different. Different? Different. 
This one ain't for sale. But it's your lucky day, cowboy. We just got a shipment of young gals. It's ripe and fine for the plucking. But they ain't cheap. See that? Ten dollars. All right. Tess, take this fine gentleman upstairs right now. And I'm gonna send a girl up there once they have her uh, polished up for you. All right. I ain't gonna forget you now. Hey, Kip. What do you think? I don't like them. I don't like them either. I don't like them at all. This way, honey. We'll take real good care of you. Meet, meet, meet. Don't worry. The curtains are for the $3 horse. You paid for a private room. Don't be nervous, sweetie. We cater to all types here. The new girl will help you out. What you want, Mill? Telegraph for your father.
Get the fuck on. Quite an injustice years back in Abilene. Uh -uh -uh. Now, you neglected to tell me that you had kinfolk under my roof, Mr. Trapp. I'll pay you whatever you want to leave my daughter alone. <laughs> I bet you would, but money ain't an issue. See, you killed a man in Wichita. He drew on me first. And that man was my brother. You kill my family, I will have my pound of flesh. Now, I could just put a bullet in your fucking head right now, but why do that? Why not have some fun? Why not? Blacksmith said this was the best you could muster up, boss. All right, that's good enough. Time up, time good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Good fortune done brought you back here, friend. But I don't reckon you'd agree, would you? Sir, the lady's causing a ruckus downstairs about the girl you shot. I don't care. These women, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. Now, another thing I took away from my time with the Chinese and gathering info. See, during the war, say we needed a position with some information. This here done did the trick. <laughs> Open them Union boys right up. See, this road in here? See, the only thing on this road in his mind is this here fire and how to get away from it. I see grown men call out for the mamas, begging for a bullet in the head. And when that rat realizes there's no way out, he's gonna start gnawing away at your skin. He's gonna gradually eat his way through your insides. Takes a hole from your gut through your back. Yeah. Now you two, you stay here until our little rat friend here has done his job. And that's when you can see this table through his stomach, okay? And no matter how much he begs, don't put a bullet in him. Hey, Travis. I'll be seeing you, friend. <laughs> I can abide by shooting an unruly whore, but no man should be tortured like this. And it's gross. Jed. Jed, come back. for her to leave town without saying a word. She was my friend. Ivory say she had gunshot from your office. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Gunshots? Hmm. That was you, Mills, showing off your draw. Right, Mills? Yeah, 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 it was me. Don't so, bitch. 
words. No, Rafer, she would not leave town without saying a word. She did express a very strong desire to leave Dodge City. And I obliged. Now, I suspect your paths will cross again, sooner or later. In Colorado, yes? Mm-hmm. Either you got any other complaints about how you're being treated? If you do, you come see me. And I'll arrange your travel, just like I did for Fran. Now get back on that goddamn floor and sell those asses. No! Son of What the hell? What the hell? I want him dead! You know where to look! Go kill that son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! Kip! Jed, get your asses down here! Now! What you need, boss? Yes, daddy. I'll be damned, Mr. President. I caught the damn train. I've been thinking about what you said at the spur. Figured you could use a hand. Obliged, friend. I ain't for anyone beating on women. One wolf to another. I reckon I'd done the same thing. And if it was my daughter, I'd kill that son of a bitch dead. Now go get the son of a bitch. Come upstairs with me. Don't shoot, sir. I'm just here for whiskey. I'm not on. I'm not on.
Where is he at? Drop it. Drop it. Easy. Where is she? She ain't here. Lips are laid, boy. You're going to show me. You're going to show me, you son of a bitch. Where? Behind you! Oh! Oh! Son of a bitch. Oh. Where's my daughter? Kill. <coughs> I'm not asking again. <laughs> I ain't afraid to meet my maker. You know, family, when one piece is missing, whole thing's broken. You broke mine. You know what this is gonna be? This is gonna be the best goddamn whore house west of the Mississippi. And your daughter's pussy was gonna buy me a couple farms. Open your mouth. Open! Bite down on the barrel. Oh! Now someone tell me where my daughter is. Ain't no trains for a good minute. No, sir. Long ways back where you come from. Yes, sir. Long as still on your own two feet. Reckon you could use a horse? Reckon I got a horse. What will you do? Reckon I'll go somewhere quiet put my feet up and retire these here boots. It's been a long road and I'm tired. <laughs> but I'll find my way home. Take care, friend. Paul, who's that man? He's just an old friend. Maybe she's in the barn.
Lily! 